Hi folks, this is Pastor Sarah with a Kids Church message for upper elementary school kids. This is the story for the month of August. Our parable for July last month was the parable of the mustard seed, a parable that Jesus tells to help us understand the realm of God, the way that God works on earth. In that parable, we learned that even a tiny mustard seed can grow into a bush that's big enough for birds to come and rest in the branches. And it got us thinking about what small things we can do that can make a big difference. This month's parable is kind of similar to that one. Have you ever baked bread? I mean, like, making the dough at home and putting it in the oven and waiting for it to come out. There are three different ways that people usually make bread these days. One of them is called quick bread. And that would be a bread where you add baking soda or baking powder. And that powder has a chemical in it that when it's mixed with something that's a little bit acidic, like yogurt or buttermilk or a little bit of lemon juice or vinegar, it starts to bubble. And the bubbles happen pretty quickly so that you mix it all together and you pour it in a pan and you stick it in the oven. And while it's in the oven, the bread puffs up a little bit and the bubbles from those chemicals make the bread nice and fluffy. That powder is also what we put in pancakes to make them fluffy or in muffins. That quick bread method is one of the ways that people make bread. A second way is to use yeast that comes in a packet or a little jar. It's usually um, little brown, it's not quite as fine as powder. Yeast is little tiny brown pellets. It almost looks like powder, but it's a little bit bigger than powder. And you take a teaspoonful, and usually you mix it into some warm water, and it starts to froth, and that's how you know that it's still healthy yeast, because yeast is actually something alive that start eating sugar, and then releasing gas after they eat the sugar. And that gas makes the bubbles that make bread fluffy. And that yeast, for the last 100, 150 years, scientists have figured out how to have just the yeast stored in a way that we can use it to bake bread. But the third way that people make bread is the most ancient, the one that's been around for thousands of years of human history. And that is called sourdough. Bread. Today we have a video of Pastor Calandra making sourdough bread. When you're making sourdough bread, you use yeast, but instead of having powdered yeast, dry yeast that you take out of the refrigerator or that you open out of a packet, the yeast is, is alive and working in a container that has flour and maybe a little bit of sugar in it. And you can keep that yeast alive by continuing to feed it, by putting it into the refrigerator, because when those yeasts get cold, they slow down and they don't eat as quickly and they don't make the bubbles as quickly. You don't have to feed them as often. But it's something that's alive. And for thousands of years, that was the only way people could make fluffy bread. You could make flat bread, like tortillas, things like that, with just flour and water and whatever seasoning you wanted to put into it, like salt. But if you wanted to make bread that was fluffy and had bubbles and was squishy on the inside, you had to have sourdough starter. You had to have a little clump of flour, maybe with a little bit of sugar mixed into it, that yeast was already growing in so that you could keep feeding it. And then you take a little bit of that starter and you put it into the dough that you're making, the water and the flour that you're mixing for your bread. And that yeast 
spreads through all the flour and starts eating the carbohydrates in it and making bubbles and it makes the dough get bigger. Sometimes it takes four hours or sometimes it takes eight hours, but the dough gets bigger as those bubbles form and the yeast also multiply. And so by the end, you have a lot more yeast in that dough. And before you put that loaf of bread in the oven, you take a little bit off and put it back in your jar and you save yeast for the next time you're gonna make bread. So all three ways of making bread, whether we're using chemical powders like baking powder or baking soda, or whether we're using dry yeast that scientists have been able to preserve for us to use in bread, or whether we're using the ancient method of live yeast that we keep in a starter and keep feeding and keep alive so that we can use them in bread. All three of those ways of making bread are called leavening because leaven is whatever we use to make the bread puffy. Doesn't matter which of those things, all of those things are leavening agents. They make our bread puffy for us. But in our parable today, when Jesus talks about leavening, he's talking about that third way of making bread, using sourdough. Because 2,000 years ago, when Jesus was telling these stories, that was the only way to make puffy bread, was with sourdough and a sourdough starter. The parable that Jesus tells is this. Once there was a woman who took a small amount of yeast and she mixed it into a huge batch of flour, 60 pounds of flour. That little bit of yeast began to do its work. And after a while, the flour had grown and the dough had gotten puffier. And first it was a little bit bigger and then it was even bigger. And then it had almost doubled in size. And she was able to make bread with that flour and a small, small amount of leaven. I wonder in what ways we are like leaven. How does our presence change the communities that we're a part of? There's a movie that you might have watched at Christmas time. It's an old movie, but it's a movie called It's a Wonderful Life. And it's a movie about a man who is having a lot of trouble. Um, he works for a bank and the bank is really struggling. And he starts to wonder if the whole world would just be better off if he had never been born. Because if he feels like he just keeps making mistakes and bad things keep happening. But in this movie, an angel comes and takes this man to see what his town would have been like if he had never been born. He sees the life that his wife would have had if he'd never been born and she had never married him. And it's not a better life. It's a worse life. He sees all kinds of differences in the community. He sees people that his bank has helped who are struggling because the bank wasn't there to help them. And he sees other people who he knows as kind, generous people, but who in this world are very mean and um, have been hurt. And so they're hurting other people and so he begins to realize that 
his life really has made a difference to his whole community. Just by being alive, he was able to transform all kinds of situations and all kinds of other people's lives. And that's true of you too. Just by existing, you are already making the world a better place. So never worry that you can't change the things that seem like big problems. It doesn't take a whole lot of people to change things. I've even heard that it only takes about three out of every 100 people really fighting hard for our society to be a better place. That small amount of people can change the whole situation for everyone. So have courage, keep an eye on the ways that your neighborhood and your family and your school need you. I really miss seeing each of you. You make my life better. I hope that you are having a good summer and I hope to be able to see you at some point in this fall. <laughs>